Hello, and welcome back to podcast number three. Today, I wanted to talk to you guys um, a little bit about how to engage an audience and how to sell to an audience and what you need to have in place in order to do that. Now, selling, this could be merchandise for an artist. This could be show tickets. Um, It might even be shoes or perfume or any other kinds of merchandise that you wish to sell to your fans. So one really important thing to do in uh, previous weeks, I know that we had discussed uh, creating a website, reserving your website domain. So first I want to dive a little bit more deeper into how to set that up and how to integrate that with a newsletter system so that you can capture an audience create an engaged fan base and then sell to that fan base. So step one, you know, when you're setting up a website, if you don't have a big budget to hire a website developer, this is completely doable on your own. There's multiple different options that you could use. One of them would be uh, there's a website tool that you could access straight out of Reverb Nation. There's another one um, through a company called Squarespace, or you could use Weebly. I mean, even if you just Google search and find, you know, in this day and age, there is just multiple different options um, that make it very easy for you to set up your own website. If you do, however, want to uh, spend a little bit more money and create a long-term solution for your business that's going to give you more flexibility on the SEO side, and on the e-commerce side, um, you know, and more template options and, and whatnot, you might want to uh, consider, you know, reserving your domain from Bluehost. Now, Bluehost.com, if you go on there and, and purchase your domain from them, you could also tap into, they have this integrated tool that, that connects straight with uh, WordPress.org. And WordPress, if you're able to access it through Bluehost, you know, that means your dashboard is is essentially going to be built through a link right in there so that you don't have to go between the two different, you know, you don't have to go through Weebly and then you have to go through um, WordPress. Like everything is just, it's all in one, which is really nice and, and easy to access everything that you need. Now, in... Um, in WordPress, there's going to be different plugins. So they might, you know, your dashboard is on the left. They might, you might not see everything right away. You might have to go to plugins and search for Yoast SEO and activate that. And then you might need to search for a um, social media integration tool so that your social media feeds are, you know, like for all of your Instagram posts, maybe you want them to show up on your website or maybe you need um, a media player to be integrated from Spotify. So there's a lot of different plugins that you can utilize and integrate into your website uh, to make the most out of the content that you are going to make accessible to your fans, essentially. Now, um, another thing that you definitely wanna integrate would be um, your MailChimp account. So there's, you know, there's there's a few different options when it comes to newsletters. I know that there's a newsletter sign up again, just like there is um, a website feature in Reverb Nation. So a lot of artists I've seen use the the newsletter sign up through Reverb Nation as well. Um, there's Constant Contact, which is about sixty dollars a month, and it's somewhat user friendly. I have found it a lot easier to use Mailchimp. So I would, if I had to recommend one of the two, I would say, you know, set up a MailChimp account, integrate your MailChimp account with your WordPress account, and that way you could easily capture email addresses from your fans through your website. So in MailChimp, what you will do is uh, there's there's some really neat features in there. One of them would be um, list building or list creating. So let's just say that you did a show at the Troubadour and it was in LA and you wanted to uh, build a newsletter list from that particular show so that you could sell music to those fans or maybe you could market 
to those fans the next time that you're in town so that maybe they'll come out to a future show. So, um, you know, obviously you want to offer some kind of incentive for that. So you're going to want to give back in some way if they're going to give you their email address. So maybe making an announcement on stage saying, you know, we've got a stack of download cards over here. If you guys visit our merch table and give us your email address in exchange, we'll give you a download card so you can, you know, here you can download uh, this song for free. Or maybe you'll give away a free t-shirt or, you know, whatever it is that you want to give them as an incentive to sign up for your newsletter list. Now, another um, another way to use MailChimp would be to uh, create a list for your website. And that list also should, you know, you probably want to set it up either as an embedded contact form on one of the tabs on your website so that you know your fans can click on the contact form or join your newsletter through that um, and stay up to date with everything that you have going on. And this, all of this information is just going to be captured and, and put into your MailChimp list that you've set up for website email address captures so that you can identify, okay, did this fan come from my website? Did this fan come from my show at the Troubadour? You know, it's really important to be able to to distinguish between, you know, where your audience is coming from so that any message that you send out to that particular group, you can remind them of how they joined and how they signed up so that they don't unsubscribe from you. Now, there's also an option for you to be able to put in a pop-up, which those pop-up windows are super valuable to have on your website. And what, what that is, is like, let's say you go to somebody's website and you, you know, the first thing you're hit with is a pop-up that says, you know, um, you know, if you give me your email address, I'm going to give you a download code to download my latest song for free, or I'm going to enter your name into a drawing for this shirt that I'm raffling off or whatever it is. Of course, you want to offer that same kind of incentive that you're giving to people at your live show um, to people that are coming to your website because you're you're essentially asking for their email address so that you could stay in touch with them. But, you know, bottom line is you're going to want to sell to these people eventually. And they know that. So you got to give them something for that information. Now, um, consistency when it comes to newsletters is just as important as consistency posting on your social media accounts. So if you're posting on your social media accounts once a day, fantastic. If you're posting three times a day, that's even better. If you're posting once every three months, we're in big, big trouble. So um, you have to keep consistency and also make sure that you are not don't, you know, you don't want to create, um, let's say you're going to create a newsletter that you're only going to send out whenever you've got a new release or just once in a blue moon. Like I would highly advise against that because people are going to forget about you really fast. They might join your newsletter and then 10 months later you're releasing your first single and they're going to be like, who is this person and why are they emailing me? So it's really important to, you know, establish like every single month, let's just say at the very least, every single month, you're going to need to send out a newsletter. So only, only set this up and only try to, you know, only try to really launch this if you feel like you're going to be able to keep up with it at this point. Because if you send out one random newsletter and then let five or 10 months go by, your audience is going to die. People are going to mark you as spam. You know, it's just, it's, it's not going to be good. So it's much better that, um, you establish like a release timeline of, of, you know, set realistic expectations essentially for your audience up front and say, thank you so much for you know your first newsletter. It should probably say, thanks so much for subscribing to my newsletter. I, you know, I really, I really am looking forward to uh, getting this information out to you, whatever that information may be. You know, maybe you're going to, maybe you're going to start blogging or maybe you're going to give them a sneak peek into any of your um, music projects you're working on, whether it's cover projects or original projects or 
maybe you'll give them behind the scenes uh, photos for any of your photo shoots that you've done. You know, give them things that they cannot get without being subscribed to your newsletter and, you know, create a realistic expectation for your audience so that they know when to expect those newsletters. So once a month, once a week, whatever you say you're going to do, you have to follow through with that. Um, okay, since we only have a few minutes left here, um, one thing that I feel is really important to mention to you guys early on is creating a uh, performing rights organization, or not creating one, but signing up for a performing rights organization. So you might have heard this term uh, from producers in the past or other people in the industry where they'll say, hey, what's your PRO? A PRO is a performing rights organization, and this is who is going to pay you uh, royalties anytime that your music is used in any type of projects, film, television, radio, like you will get royalties um, as long as you register your music properly. So um, I would recommend uh, my, you know, the two PROs that most of my artists use are BMI or ASCAP. So you would go to BMI's website or go to ASCAP's website and you would you know, put in your information as a creator, set up, establish a creator account. And then um, if you are not signed to a publishing deal, you should also, uh, you know, create a publisher account in addition to your artist account so that you can assign all publishing to yourself essentially. So, you know, that's why when you're setting up, like we, we discussed in, in one of the previous podcasts, when you set up your business license, you might not just want to create um, a business license for your personal artist earnings. You might also want to have another DBA under that same umbrella that is your publishing company. So by having one of each, you are able to assign all of your publishing income to your own personal publishing account, and then all of your artist income is going to your artist account, and you can separate the two. Um, I mean, you could lump it all together if you really wanted to, but if we want to be technical and thorough and do things right the first time, that's what I would suggest doing. Now... Um, Split sheets. This is something we're going to dive into in much more detail um, in the future weeks. But I have to mention this now because I don't want to, you know, have somebody ask, you know, what the heck I wrote this song with this artist. I didn't get any credit on it. I haven't seen any royalties. You know, they didn't even have my permission written out to use the song, whatever it may be. So anytime you walk into a writing session, with anyone, a producer, a writer, a friend, whatever. If you write a song with them, it is really important to have a split sheet. And that split sheet is going to just, it could be very, very basic. It just says, what percentage of this song do you own? Um, music is broken into two parts. It's, mus it's broken into publishing. There's a publishing side, and then there is a songwriting side. So there's a hundred percent of each side. Essentially, you know, if, if, if we were to look at this on paper, it would look like 200 percent, um, which means like, let's say that you sat in a room with one other artist, you each get 50-50. In reality, you're getting 50 percent of publishing, you're getting 50 percent of songwriting. So together, that's gonna, you know, that's gonna be 200 percent of a song. So just make sure you know who owns what every time you go into a session. You'd put in your BMI or your ASCAP number there uh, with your contact information, and somebody's going to want to register that song so that you're protected. So um, we will sit down and go in this, you know, go into more detail with this. But I did want to get this out in one of the early podcasts to make sure that you guys are protected and that you're paid back in royalties. So thanks so much for listening. Uh, shoot me over any messages to at Danny Thompson Music, and we'll see you next week.